All right, guys, we are live. Uh, welcome to hour four of 24 hours of broadcasting. Celebrate a mic uh, to celebrate Community Manager Appreciation Day 2016. Uh, this is the seventh year as a community. We've all been celebrating uh, community management. Um, it stems back uh, to Jeremiah Owang, uh, who seven years ago suggested that the fourth uh, the fourth sun or the fourth Monday of uh, every January would just take a minute to pause and appreciate uh, community managers and, and reflect on our industry. And so uh, this is the fourth year that we've um, gathered all together to do a 24-hour broadcast. Uh, it's the third year we've um, worked with sponsors and a committee to do awards. Uh, this year we had over 300 different nominees uh, for a, a whole bunch of different awards that uh, that. Dom will be um, talking about later later um, in the broadcast. And uh, uh, with that, I just want to introduce uh, us here in the studio. Hi, my name is Brew. Uh, I'm the director of Awesome with Be the Change Revolutions, <clears throat> as well as co-producer here, uh, or co-producer at uh, My Community Manager with Sherry. Hey, everybody. I'm Sherry Rohde, and I'm the community manager at Magento, um, as well as co-producing Jerry out with Brew. Hey guys, I'm Barack here up in Seattle. I am the founder of Amplify Yourself and I'm also the community manager at Meshfire. And here's Dom. Hey guys, <laughs> I'm Dom. Um, I am a community manager, project manager with Be the Change Revolutions, um, as well as co host with Sherry and Brew for my community manager. Uh, really excited. Um, just want to do give a quick shout out to all of our sponsors um, that, you know, make this possible. Um, not only do they have their Names and logos right behind Sherry and Brew in uh, the HQ down in LA. But just giving a quick shout out to Salesforce Community Cloud, Higher Logic, Online Community Results, uh, Sprout Social, Vanilla Forums, Zoom. We have CommunityManagement.org, SocialMedia.org, Amplify Yourself, Igloo Intranet, as well as Meshfire. And uh, like Bruce said, um, you know, they also help make the awards possible. And in uh, seven hours, actually, um, so stay tuned, in seven hours, we'll be giving away the first of those awards. So we'll throw it on over to you guys. Fantastic. So uh, this panel is called uh, Debunking the Myths of Facebook Fatigue. And uh, Jan, we'll turn things over to you. Well, thanks, Bruce. Um, good morning to you all. Uh, we've got an amazing panel today. Uh, we've got uh, uh, from left to right, we have Andrew Gerrard in London. We have James Barisic in Brittany. And we have Scott Gould right across the channel in Exeter. And I'm Jan Gouvenek. I'm the uh, CEO and founder of Visionary Marketing and I'm based in Paris, France. Uh, we're going to talk about this uh, Facebook fatigue phenomenon. I mean, actually, I went back to uh, some of my friends on Twitter. And I found out that some had already written about this in 2008. That's barely four years after uh, Facebook was created and launched. Um, but more recently, actually, uh, a few weeks ago, I came across that post, which I'm actually uh, entering in the chat box um, in LinkedIn. And the, uh, the post is called, Are We Entering the Age of Facebook Fatigue? It seems like... Uh, a recurring theme on the internet um, and apparently there are numbers about this uh, active usage of Facebook according to the global web index G GWI uh, dropped by 8% in 2014 um, so it's more a drop in usage than uh, uh, volumes in fact so it's more okay it was the same number of users are actually still increasing but uh, fewer people are using it um, basically due to uh, well more competition from uh, other uh, competing social media like Pinterest, uh, Tumblr and Instagram. Uh, most uh, importantly, uh, it seems like from GWI results that uh, a lot of the drop in usage is coming from uh, teenagers using it less than they used to. Now, uh, this question about Facebook fatigue was uh, raised during one of our courses. Uh, you know, James and I was uh, actually were uh, uh, facilitating this course uh, for GEM Grenoble Ecole de Management in Paris, and there was this question by one of our students. You know, is 
Facebook usage dropping, and we uh, we wanted to find out, you know, with uh, our uh, our own survey. And James uh, launched a survey. When was that? Two, two, or three months ago, uh, in uh, US, well, amongst US, UK, and French audiences, so that we could actually get the numbers straight from the horse's mouth. So, uh, James, I'm going to hand over to you so that you can. Uh, uh, present some of the results, and then when, whenever um, I find that you know that we can actually uh, stop, uh, then I'll turn to Scott and Andrew to comment on uh, each of your uh, uh, results. Uh, if if needs be, I have the PDF at the ready, and I can share it. So just let me know, and I hand over to you. And we can't hear you, so you... you can you hear me now? Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear you now. Fantastic. I got very confused uh, by someone who works in technology by uh, what is clearly a physical button. I apologize. Um, so we, we uh, um, started a, um, an online survey a few weeks ago, um, just towards the end of uh, October. Um, about Facebook fatigue. Um, it, the, the question had come up during one of the lectures um, that we run. Uh, we, we were running at uh, Grenoble uh, Ecole de Management, as, as Jan said, and we decided to try and update the numbers. Uh, and what we found was, was to us quite interesting because we had um, the anecdotal stuff and we had some uh, some older stuff, but we didn't have anything that was really up to date. So. Um, we, we asked a, a very limited number of questions and we asked a bit of demographic data so that we could play with those. Um, there is an article um, that um, Yam will share or I think the guys at uh, CMAD have also shared on their uh, Twitter feed. Um, you can find it on my Twitter feed at JamesMB. Um, uh, and Yam could also share that uh, PDF, that would be fantastic. Um, Cool. So, so we started off with a very simple question: that Have you taken a break of any description? Um, and the the answer to that, as you can see, was about almost 60% <coughs> of people had. Um, we had quite a good, uh, um, quite a good response rate. So we had 530, I think it was 530 odd people um, uh, who responded. I'm hoping uh, someone's going to tell me that everyone can see the PDF, aren't they? I'm hoping. Someone can see. Can can uh, Scott? I can see you. Can you wave if you can see the PDF? Can yes, you fantastic. all see the PDF? Cool. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> just just no. just being slightly concerned there. now. Um, so yeah, we've we 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 um asked quite simply whether or not people had taken any sort of break from uh from Facebook, and we 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 came up with this sixty percent figure. Now, the 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 second question that we we had a sort of sub series of questions and um, we wanted to find out more of those uh, from those people who had so if we if we can just uh, squeeze down to the second question and we'll make all this available we'll, we'll share the PDF uh, online um, the, the, we asked people what sort of break that they took so whether or not the intention was it was permanent and, f um, and final when they stuck to it whether they thought it was permanent but then changed their mind or whether it was some form of temporary break um, now what what Jan just said was quite interesting is that we have this 8% um, drop in active users. Um, it's always quite um, uh, satisfying when your figures tie up with other people's figures. So what we found was um, on our survey 8.9% of people said that they had um, what was described as a permanent and final uh, break from from Facebook. Now, what we don't know, of course, and, and this is the uh, this is the reason why we have to look into these things, is how many of those actually deleted their profile and how many think they might have done, but the profile's actually still there. Um, and of course, that's the reason why um, you, you, we can see uh, a, a potential drop in uh, active users, but actually increasing in numbers. So a lot of people that think they may have left may not have actually left. Uh, in a in a in a true sense, um, but we had so we had um, almost twenty percent of people deciding uh, that they were taking a permanent break. Whether or not they followed through on that was was another um, was another issue, um, and the rest were taking some kind 
of um, temporary break. Um, and, and you'll see there that it's, it's about 44, uh, 40, 40 ish percent uh, of people were looking at taking a break under a week so so it's quite a um, it's quite a thought through process of getting uh, to that point where actually you've had enough and you want to you want to walk away um, uh, if we whiz down to question three um, again this, this was this maybe, was, maybe we can we can take a, a break uh, right now James and turn to Scott sure and ask him you know what Scott, have you been able to probe your your friends and uh, and social media friends? Mostly, they're quite numerous. So, uh, have you found out that you know maybe some of them were uh, taking a break from Facebook and, and uh, possibly other social media, or is the is the uh, um, the thrill still there? What, what's your opinion about that? Uh, my observations completely agree with the, the data that James, you know, is presenting right now. Thank you for that. Thank you for presenting it, James, and uh, I look forward to hearing more of the research. Uh, observationally, most people that I know um, have massively decreased their use of Facebook. Um, do take Facebook breaks or Facebook fasts? There's different phrases that are being used to describe it. Um, and the ones who do use it, they seem to be changing their behavior. Many of them use it as a news feed to read and post less, post less. Uh, so my wife, for instance, is a great example of this. Um, she will flick through, see what people are saying, see what's going on with her friends, but she hardly makes a status update on Facebook at all anymore. So it certainly seems that people are uh, decreasing their output uh, decreasing their usage and really considering a more scaled back approach and I think some of them do seem to be fleeing to other social networks but I'm sure we'll touch on that as we go on but for now my experience certainly is that people are finding this to be true um, not just with Facebook also with Twitter it seems but I'll hand back to you there Jan. Uh, Andrew we we've all been I mean the four of us actually have been involved in uh, the the famous like minds uh, uh, conferences, you know, maybe mm -hmm. five, five or six years ago. Uh, at, at that time, there was really, you know, the 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 the, the, the amount of usage on, <coughs> on social media was just amazing, and the, the amount of sharing and the, it was everything was really really thrilling at the time. What what do, what is your feeling about this? Is can you see uh, this? Um, uh, thrill going down again, or or as as others have seen, or or, or do you think it is just uh, uh, surface tension? And uh, when we dig deeper, then you know, social media is still very much alive. Um, I think there are a number of points there. Um, uh, but firstly, I'd just like to um, echo Scott's thoughts um, and the, to say thank you to James and to you, Jan, for producing this um, valuable research. I think this is an important part of our, how we understand people using social media and uh, it's great that we can actually see some empirical evidence to suggest that you know that people's habits and behaviors are actually changing in how they use social media and Facebook specifically. Scott used a phrase there, um, a scaled back approach, um, which I think is you know, very, very relevant to how a lot of people are now starting to think about Facebook and uh, and their usage. Certainly, anecdotally, uh, a large number of my contacts and people within my network have taken breaks. Uh, I, I think most of us have probably got um, at least one or two of our contacts, if not more, who said, I'm going to take a break from social media. Um, you know, I'm going on holiday for two weeks and I'm going to put all my digital devices away and uh, I'm going to be off the grid is a, uh, you know, quite a common phrase or kind of a common thing that um, people seem to, uh, to to take on board, and um, I think very much we're seeing people taking a more measured approach to how they use Facebook, uh, and also uh, you know as Scott mentioned Twitter and social media in general, and people are starting to pick and choose a lot more carefully about what they do and how they do it um, uh, on these networks. Um, I think we are seeing a shift in the way that people's behaviour. 
uh, on Facebook and social media in general is starting to um, uh, impact on what they do and uh, what they say. And brand managers in particular um, and marketeers need to pay attention to this because it's going to be an important shift in how they actually address those audiences and how they engage with them for the future. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Scott, I uh, would like to get back to this uh, maybe decreasing passion or enthusiasm for Facebook. Is it something which is just uh, pertinent to Facebook itself or is it social media in general? We've heard you know, the, uh, there's, there's loads of changes coming on uh, with Twitter at the moment. Uh, most of their managers being sacked. Uh, the, 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 the amount of sharing on Twitter uh, since they actually decided to take off the number of Twitter accounts has gone down by 11%. Actually, what I saw on my blog is that since they started doing this, is uh, not, not 11%. I, we lost something like 80% of our sharing uh, through uh, on Twitter. Is so uh, talk talk about uh, Twitter fatigue here. <laughs> it's quite it's quite impressive. Um, so what what do you think? Are we are we at a turning point in our in the history of web and social media here, or or is it it's, just uh, on the surface? It's funny, isn't it? Because you know we talk about the history of the web, and yet still this is all very young in terms of the grand scheme of things. It's funny how. Uh, the social media very much just seems to be a microcosm of, of human community. Um, the stats seem to suggest that 2008 through to 2010 or 11 were the boom years for social media. Since then, uh, sign-ups to social media sites have slowed down. But over the last year or so, we've seen a lot of new social networks gaining a lot more traction. Uh, Snapchat's becoming a lot more popular, Vine. Periscope, uh, Beamy, all these um, video-based ones are now becoming more popular. And I think, and uh, it seems to be that David Spinks of Community Manager Hub um, you know, has, has the same thoughts on it. He posted on it recently on his blog that people seem to be searching for community. That's very relevant that we're on Community Manager Appreciation Day. And people are finding less community in Facebook and less community in Twitter, so they're going to newer and therefore um, less congested social networks to find that community. Um, Facebook and Twitter have become very congested places, particularly Twitter. Um, I've taken a Twitter hiatus, um, come back over the recent months, and found that the interaction is nothing compared to what the interaction used to be four years ago. Uh, same thing on Facebook. It does seem that they've become congested places, and people are looking for community, and so they're flocking to some of these new social networks. Interestingly, on um, the piece that David Spinks wrote, he, he was talking about how Facebook group usage is up 50%. So it does seem that, um, again, you know, this, the, the group mechanism, the community mechanism of Facebook is increasing, but the, the organic level of community, just from a news feed, seems to be decreasing, and so people are looking for those greener pastures. That certainly would be my take on it as well and I think that explains why we're finding people flocking to uh, newer social networks and of course ones that are video because it's a more uh, perhaps authentic rendering of ourself at the same time so that would be my take on it yeah and I don't know what your take on it is. That, that, that's a good point Scott I like this idea of going back to the basics of uh, community and then people actually trying to share and uh, yeah I think it's always been my point that uh, Social media was used wrongly in the past five years, mostly due to the flocking of uh, 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 brands coming onto Facebook and being new to it and not understanding uh, the community feeling of social media in Facebook and others. Um, they have all tried to bypass the rules of uh, word of mouth marketing and uh, of the uh, you know the basics of uh, of sharing and uh, and pleasing people before trying to please themselves, they all jumped onto um, uh, uh, um, advertising, which I think is was also a request by all the uh, shareholders of all these social media platforms, and and to an extent, 
the more shareholders of social media platforms are asking for immediate returns, the more they're shooting themselves in the foot because I think they are in fact responsible for the decrease in usage and the de decrease in interest. Now, I'm going to hand over to James, who's been very silent in the past uh, five, five, uh, five minutes, and uh, maybe even take your uh, point on uh, uh, comments on 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 this, uh, James. Plus, I would have, uh, like to ask you another question about uh, what you have been to able to notice in terms of differences between all three areas which you have probed in your survey: U.S., U.K., France. Uh, have you found any significant differences, and uh, how do you explain them? Uh, um, it, it's it's interesting you should mention that. I, I I've got um, the, the slide that you've got up at the moment. The the the, the question that you've got up at the moment. I've got some interesting numbers on. Um, but before before I get to that, just keep everyone on tenter hooks and listening. Um, just just to go back to to what everyone's been saying. I, I think the um, I, I think there is an issue um, with uh, Facebook and Twitter. In particular, and I think actually it comes back to something that quite a lot of us. Um, I remember having this conversation at, at Like Minds at, 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 back in back in the day uh, when social media was all black and white. Um, uh, that um, that there will come a point when the networks are so big that it will become more obvious who uh, it will become more obvious as to who actually knows how to. Um, uh, create communities and create networks on them, and those who are doing it because actually the, the networks are quite small and therefore it's easier to to corral people. Um, and I think we've reached that point. And I think one of the reasons why, um, uh, leaving aside the technological reasons why, um, for instance, the video sharing sites and the the live video sites are becoming more um, uh, more popular. One of the reasons why um, there has potentially been this shift away is there. There, I think there there are some um, uh, people who are new to um, uh, community management and marketing online who thought, well, we'll go into push into Twitter and push into Facebook, and then they've actually found it's quite difficult to do. Um, because because things are scaled and because um, it's harder to be heard uh, unless you're doing something that's genuinely quite interesting. Um, so I think that's one of the other factors. Um, so we've got the technological side where um, new technology will allow us to do new things, but I think we've also got the the scaling side where um, where in the past being um, an amateur on a smaller network is is always feasible. If you've got a huge network, to create traction on that's actually quite hard. Um, now, if we can go back to the that slide, um, the the one that I think you've got up at the moment, um, because the which is question two, I believe it. So it's the the, the sort of um, uh, the sort of Facebook um, break that people were thinking of. Of taking, this was actually the first point uh, where, or, or actually not the first point, it's actually the major point where we've started to see big differences in um, how different demographics um, uh, have have different um, views on Facebook um, and, and 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 how they're taking the break. So when we broke the figures down. Um, uh, one of the demographics we looked at was where people uh, came from, um, and when you break those figures down, um, what you find is that the the in the UK and France, people are much more likely to get to to um, a breaking point and think they're quite happy to live outside Facebook than they are in the US. So in the UK and France, the people choosing the permanent option, so the break was permanent and final, or the break, the break was meant to be permanent, but I went back. So that initial mindset of, okay, I've had enough completely, rather than I'm just going to take a break and come back to it. In the UK and France, that was 24 to 25% of people. So a quarter of people that, that decided to go decided that they'd really had enough and they were going once and for all. In the States, that was 9%. 
and that's quite a huge difference. That's, that's two and a half times. Uh, you're two and a half times more likely to get to that stage of I've had enough um, and I'm walking away in the UK and France than you, you are in the States. Now, there may be all sorts of underlying reasons um, to do with um, uh, to do with um, communications, to do with uh, the um, the consumer side of Facebook that people think actually there is a benefit to them. There might be other reasons where they think actually I need to be on Facebook. Um, but the but on the surface of it, and that would be something fascinating to look into in, in further research. But on the surface of it, um, people in the UK and France are much more likely to to say right that's it away. Not not just I'm having a break from this in a bit of time. But we'll switch it off. Um, how, can, how can we explain this? I mean, is it because we are more of uh, Luddites in the UK and France, or is it something to do with Europe being European and a bit more skeptical? I don't know, critical. I, I don't know. It'd be, it, it would be interesting to see what the hooks are, um, and uh, partly because we we weren't expecting. Um, and partly because we weren't expecting that result. Um, we didn't really uh, probe that um, any further. Um, but it is it, it, there is clearly a stark difference. It 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 does look as if it may be cultural on some as uh, in some aspect. Um, why I don't know. I, I I could postulate as to why, but then I might be um, I might be guiding people in answers in further research because actually it's quite an interesting. Uh, I think there there are things that underline this question that underlie this question. Um, that are quite fundamental to how people use um, Facebook and how much they think it's um, really tied into their lives, um, which are quite fascinating. Um, and, and the fact that clearly there, there is this um, there is this uh, feeling in um, the UK and France amongst people that have left. Now they're either pushed to a point or they think. Um, I can walk away from this, and it won't have that much of a difference. I don't know which 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 of those two it is. Maybe we can turn to Andrew and try and uh, pick his brains about that. And uh, Andrew, do you think is this something which is really pertinent to France and and uh, England only, or is that something that we'll be able to find in other countries as well, maybe in Asia? Um, uh, gosh, um, it's, I don't know. I mean, like James, I'm a little bit reluctant to speculate on the reasons for the significant discrepancy, um, other than perhaps uh, to suggest rather facetiously that, that we've got better things to do with our lives than um, come back to Facebook uh, you know, it, once we've taken a break. Um, perhaps it's because that once people have taken a break, they realize that actually Facebook and social media generally isn't as an important part of their lives. Uh, as perhaps we we thought it might be um, uh, in the early days, and that people are tr looking for a better balance in how they use social networking in general and Facebook specifically, um, or perhaps it comes back to the fact that um, you know uh, the value in Facebook and and its relevancy to users has diminished somewhat. Uh, I, I'm going to echo one of the points that Scott made um, uh, earlier actually about um, people seeking community and maybe it's uh, perhaps because people find that Facebook, um, superficially at least, um, through its news feeds uh, doesn't provide the same sense of relevancy and community that people are looking for that they uh, move away and they gravitate more towards areas that are going to provide that level of um, uh, relevancy, engagement, and uh, community purpose. So, hence, you know, Facebook um, uh, groups, you know, uh, LinkedIn groups, the rise of, um, you know, private networks, and so on. And perhaps in uh, in Europe, you know, the UK and France, maybe other countries, we find that uh, you know that sense of uh, community lies elsewhere. So we're more likely to gravitate away from Facebook. Than perhaps um, U.S. users, but uh, as I say, you know that that's that's purely um, you know a piece of speculation that perhaps um, you know somebody else, as James suggests, might want to research and provide some uh, uh, some facts based on that. Absolutely, I think this is a good starting point for uh, digging deeper into this uh, issue of uh, uh, Facebook fatigue and uh, social media fatigue in general. Okay, uh, James, maybe we can jump to uh, question three now. 
Can I just whiz back onto question uh, two for just one second? Sure, sure, um, sure, sure. What, one of the other things that we found um, on this, um, and it, it again, we we don't know the reasons why, um, but when you split that down into male and female, um, you'll find that um, I'm so tempted to ask to ask the audience as to whether they think that females or males would be more likely to pick a permanent. I'm not going to. Um, the the that you, what you find is that um, uh, males are much more likely to, at that initial point, um, decide that the break is permanent. 28% um, of, of males um, will pick one of those two options, permanent and final or permanent but I change my mind, 16% of females. So it, you do have this, um, uh, you, you do have this, uh, this this difference in in gender as well as um, uh, potentially in, in in different cultures as well. Interesting. Interesting. So and let's let's we... yeah let's whiz on to to, to question um, three. Um, the, what became interesting again with, with these with these following questions is actually we didn't see much difference um, in when we started breaking the numbers down. It was it's that, that that question two was the, the key one where you had cultural differences um, or, or whatever p um, pulling different groups apart. Now here we we asked people to to rate um, the experience. What's very interesting on this to me is that nobody rated it very negative um, and you only had uh, two people rating it um, uh, to to um, one two or three so so um, uh, as as quite a negative experience um, the The vast majority of people saw it as positive um, uh, the well, you can see, you can see the numbers; they, they pretty much speak for themselves. Everything from that that um, that light grey bar up is five to ten, and everything from the uh, sort of dark teal down uh, is 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 negative. Um, it, it, it's seen once people do it; it's seen as a as an overwhelmingly positive thing. Now that then I think feeds through quite nicely to um, uh, question four. Perfect segue. I could work on radio. Um, if we can get to question four, um, we asked people uh, what they did after that. Once they'd they, they'd had their break, um, what they what they've done since. So whether they've had other breaks. Now, um, clearly, um, the, 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 you've got that group of people that never came back. Um, so so that's that that's that's one group. But if you look at the rest. Um, and and you uh, you see that that actually the vast majority of people once they've done it once are prone to do it again, um, and you have um, fifty six percent of people, just over fifty six percent, fifty seven percent of people, who um, will now take breaks either occasionally or regularly from Facebook. And you have twenty two, twenty three percent of people who now have a complete off-grid digital detox thing from all their networks. Um, now that, that's 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 pretty much 80% of all people who decide to take some kind of break from Facebook will then do it again regularly, occasionally. They will they will they will do it. So it's it's clearly. Um, a behavior changer. Once you've crossed the Rubicon, once you've decided that you can switch off and live without it, um, you can you can carry on doing it. Um, now that I think that, that if there are two things that are, that are the, the key takeaways from this is one is that when you're doing community management, community, um, online marketing, 10% um, of the people that you're marketing to will just go at some point, uh, just permanently leave. And the other is, um, of, the, of that 60% um, of, of people who will have some kind of break, 80% of them will probably not be there at some stage while you're trying to talk to them. Um, and that's that's quite important because we're not talking about just little breaks where you know the, um, you know I, I, someone that didn't log in because they were at work. Uh, we're we're talking about people that are, are going 
for a big chunk of conversation. Um, and that must have some impact on the, ki the, the sorts of ways that we create content and try and discuss with people. Yeah? Pe it has to be kind of more um, semi-permanent rather than uh, rather than instant, because otherwise you're going to be just missing people as they go away. I think this is this is one of the one of the key things. It is a behavioural change. As soon as you've done it once, that's it. There is no fear in it. You can carry on doing it. Uh, Scott, any comments on this uh, question for? <clears throat> Personally, you know, I find this glorious um, because I, I, I really think that you, you can come again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, James. Well, well, I, but, I mean, you know, my, my, my own take is that I spent years off Twitter, and I spent I don't know a year or two years off Facebook. Um, I, I really think it's very healthy that our society is actually starting to take digital detoxes and getting back to stuff like nature, um, or even just not nature, just reality. Um, mindfulness has become, you know, very, very big, and, and I think it's um, somewhat indicative of that. Even the interesting that you know the word detox, it, you know, is what you're elected to use, does seem to suggest something about our health, um, our diet, and needing to take a break from some of this. Um, interesting last year how slowly some of the popular Instagram people began to say how a lot of this stuff is fake anyway. You know, it's exaggerated, it's this um, put on thing. Uh, I read an article recently that said that only 20% of what we read online in terms of social media is actually true to that person. There's this sense of um, projection and narcissism or solipsism about the whole thing. So I think this is very, very healthy. Now, admittedly, for marketers, there are difficulties. I was definitely one of those people who was heralding social media as being the future and uh, forget about any other form of marketing. It's all about social media. And now we find out, as James has said, if you've got an audience that could be quite transient, look out. Um, but this is, again, is probably quite healthy. Social media is not the silver bullet. Um, nothing is the silver bullet. Um, and let us you know, take heed and realize that just like any other form of marketing, Sometimes it's hit and miss, and we've got to be able to handle that. And I think the brands, again, that succeed, the marketing that succeeds is that which seems to really um, seek to build value, seek to build platform, value, support for consumers. Social media is one way that they augment that, but ultimately their user base is engaged, whether it's through social media or through online or not, um, those people are engaged and therefore aren't dependent on them, whether they're on uh, uh, Facebook or not. So that would be my take on it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really encouraged in, by in, this research. In the light of uh, your your own Facebook break, because you, you spent uh, a year or two out of Facebook, uh, did you find that your usage of the tool would actually change, even actually from a business point of view? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I found it very healthy, personally, because when you're flicking on it every day, you're just looking at all of this stuff and it, where did, you don't even store it necessarily, it's this ambient noise and it was healthy to get rid of that. I found it healthy to get rid of all of the comparison that goes on with social media. Um, so I actually, I converted my, social, my Facebook profile into a Facebook page and now what I do is I will post up questions a few times a week and see how people respond to it and enjoy discussing things with people that have been my friends and are now my followers or fans, which ultimately are people that I know. You know, I'm not this is not some big brand exercise. I'm not a brand. I'm an individual who has some people that happen to know him. And and I, I really enjoy doing that now. I, I enjoy it being actually a far more communal piece. And I don't have to look at other updates and things. Um, if I want to stay connected to people, I do it through email. Remember that? That old social network, email, or even even phone, <laughs> or a person to person. So that's kind of the way that I I roll now. Old but reliable technology. Um, Andrew, um, what's your take on this? Have you have you yourself taken a, a break uh, from Facebook? Is, um, has your usage changed? It, it, and, uh, um, it, it, yes, Jan, it, it, it has, um, and. I mean, my behaviour has has changed not so much in uh, in terms of taking breaks. Um, although I go through periods where I don't use Facebook or social media generally 
um, anywhere near as much as I used to. But then at other times uh, I do and my usage might actually accelerate or um, I might use um, social media a, a lot more, really depending on what I'm doing. Um, my approach has, um, uh, has changed uh, really because I've become a lot more relaxed about how I use these social networks and social tools in that I'm not trying to force something, um, I'm not trying to um, you know, uh, shout out and say look at me, look at me, you know, um, aren't I fantastic, isn't my life wonderful, aren't I the brilliant business person that you all think I am. Um, it's very much more of a relaxed approach whereby if I feel that uh, I want to post something onto Facebook then I will, whether it be a photograph of my breakfast um, or, or whether it be some uh, scintillating stunning business insight into the latest developments um, in a particular sector or field. Um, and uh, you know, I think that once people find a, a happy medium, once people start to find the balance that suits them, then uh, they're far more comfortable about taking those breaks and uh, about using social media in a far more relevant way um, to their lives. Uh, and this really um, is the point, I guess, that James um, uh, was making about once people have tried taking a break, whether it be a short one or whether it be an extended period, um, people, uh, you know, as James said, you know, have crossed the Rubicon. They're far more comfortable about not using social media um, uh, than uh, than previously. Um, I think a lot of people may previously have thought, oh, you know, I have to be seen on the network. I mean, there's a famous cartoon of um, two people talking at a, at a water cooler, an office water cooler, and one person is saying to the other, um, I used to know somebody um, uh, that um, uh, used to use social media, but then they stopped and now they simply don't exist. Um, you know, uh, and uh, th there's very much a case of people thinking that they have to be seen on social media in order for them to feel that they have some kind of value and relevancy to other people. And I don't think that's quite necessarily the case anymore. Certainly in my own personal experience, um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't feel obliged or compelled to use social media um, in any way near quite the same levels as perhaps I would have done um, a good number of years ago. And Twitter, um, uh, I know we've mentioned Twitter a number of times, um, I think is a, is a useful perspective because my usage of Twitter um, has altered radically over the past year to two years or so. Um, I don't use it anywhere near as much um, as I used to and um, uh, consequently I find myself using other social networks and tools um, a lot more frequently when previously I would have gone straight to Twitter. Um, uh, and that uh, I think is uh, partly due to the fact that there's so much more noise on these social networks now that people um, feel that you know that they don't want to be bombarded with all of these um, you know, messages and these news feeds and, uh, and so on. So that they're, they're looking in other areas for them. That, that's fascinating insights, Andrew and Scott. I mean, I, I really like the, the way that you're opening new opportunities, James, for maybe further uh, investigation on, on social media usage here. I think it's, it's probably not just that we are facing Facebook fatigue, it's just that we are facing a turn in the usage of social media at large, that, you know, people are using it for different things, and maybe from what I understand, from what you're saying, is probably people shying away from uh, the good old personal branding uh, approach uh, that there used to be. Now, I, I, I don't see that much happening here on this side of the channel, where, uh, and unfortunately for myself, I think, uh, social media uh, presence still... Um, uh, well, bestows a lot of credit on the people actually there and, and more present than others. And I, I've, I've actually not used Twitter that much in the past year or so because I haven't had time. But when I saw my uh, uh, my following rise by more than 50%, so maybe that boils down to uh, what uh, James was saying about people uh, reading more than. Uh, uh, well, talking less, but then reading more, maybe. Mm. And then there's, there's people like me writing maybe more than others. I don't know. Um, 
Okay, so we um, maybe we can. Um, it's it's quarter two now, so we've got uh, a, a quarter of an hour left, and we've got three questions to go through. So maybe we can move on to question five, James. Um, well, w with the w with with the final ones, um, with, with the, there's not an awful lot for us to learn. We were we th these were the um, the demographic questions, um, so they were primarily there for us to be able to um, to rip apart the the, the 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 top ones. They do show us something of how um, uh, of of the sort of demographics that we we will get to. Uh, answer a um, a survey. Um, it, it is interesting um, that that it, it seems to be that that females are more likely to um, help in a survey than males, um, and also that um, with the uh, uh, with the age numbers. Um, uh, so I, I know some people will will be. Um, uh, will be intrigued by the age numbers, but it does actually go back to um, what a lot of us have been saying uh, for a long, long time, uh, that, that with Facebook um, um, and also with Twitter, the, de the age demographic of, of engaged users is actually a lot older um, than uh, people uh, would imagine. Um, Does it actually is... mean that Facebook users are older, James, or that your following is... is... Just nothing but all gifts. Well, um, I, I look. I, I am. I am very pleased that you follow me, but that's not the issue. <laughs> the the it, it is. There have been a number of things that I've done before where where the the age profile, the age demographic, is completely not what you'd expect. Um, uh, in in the sense of in the sense of you would expect it to be much younger. Um, the it was it was brilliantly explained to me after a training session once that I was expecting to be full of people um, in their thirties and uh, and forties. And when we went into the room, there was no one in the room under sixty-five. Um, and it was about um, it was about Facebook privacy. And I asked afterwards. I, I said that I, I really wasn't expecting that. That just completely threw me. Uh, and it was explained to me in a way that blaze the whole thing open and makes it completely obvious. There is a generation of people who throughout their lives have had new technology and just accepted it. I'm not talking about new technology like we've got, like you know you get an iPhone or something. I'm talking about telly. I'm talking about fridges. I'm talking about really quite fundamental big stuff. Um, and they've just got on with it. So they've had the, they have the first personal computers. They have the first calculators, pocket calculators. They had the first computers at work. They had the first TVs, and it's not our generation. We think we're some um, technological um, wizards uh, and masterminds that we can accept this new technology. But actually, if you look at most new technology, it's not that new. It's it's an iteration of something that's gone before. The people that really had and had to deal with proper breakthroughs in new technology isn't our generation. It's the people that are over 65, and they're the ones that are more likely to be using it and engaging with it because they're not scared of it. Um, in, in, in the same way, I suppose, that you have this group of people who we call, um, or that, that are uh, deemed to be, um, oh, I've forgotten the phrase now, uh, oh, digital natives. Um, the digital native things me, makes no sense to me at all. The people who are the true digital natives, the ones that aren't phased at all by technology, are the people in the 65 and above bracket. So when you see these these demo, these um, age demographic bells, you they they always look older than you'd imagine them to be, and that's because well, we have kind of this preconceived idea that all these things that are um, lights and bells and whistles um, are really uh, interesting to young people, and it's just not the truth. It's not the fact. None of it is never borne out. There's a, there's a few explanations to this as well. I mean, I, obviously there is a bias on on the kind of people that you've asked the, the questions to because sure. you have a certain following and and your and your following have the same kind of following and this is obviously creating a bias. Uh, B, uh, the average uh, uh, age for our populations is about 41 years old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so obviously, if you take any large population for anything. You will always tend to find something which is more or less uh, uh, similar to 
uh, the same uh, age groups. Uh, and, and thirdly, I think you're right, um, uh, many sociologists, including Antonio Cassilli, uh, there's Jacques Foulon as well in Belgium, Cassilli is Italian but he's based in France. They, they, these two have carried out quite a few studies about uh, uh, so-called digital natives and showing that, in fact, they didn't exist. So, uh, we, maybe this is, this is uh, uh, something we can tackle for uh, next year's CMAD, debunking the myth of digital natives. Uh, now, uh, going back to the, the, the last question, maybe, uh, I see you, you've asked, you've probed people in Afghanistan. That's brilliant. <laughs> well, we, 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 asked, um, uh, we asked people to uh, say where they were from, um, primarily uh, so that, we, again, we could, we could um, uh, tie down um, and start looking at different countries and how that how they how they uh, how they do stuff. Um, it, it was um, it, it, it was much wider um, than I was expecting it to be. Um, if you go upwards a bit for me, um, yeah, we had um, um, Azerbaijan and we had um, uh, Afghanistan and other places. That there are. Um, I think there are a number of reasons for that um, uh, to do with um, our respective followings. I know I've got mm. um, some followers sure. from some stuff I've done in um, in uh, Russia and um, uh, the CIS before, um, and so it, yeah, the, the, it was it, it was much wider. But again, it's always useful to to look at these things and just to see. Um, it, it was it was shared in a number of different places. So it wasn't just the it wasn't just the normal suspects, um, and it, everything that you put out. Um, it doesn't actually matter how focused it is. We we we, we could have tried to focus it um, quite heavily on one place. You would always get um, a much wider spread than you would you, you would otherwise Im have imagined. Um, there were some places that I expected to be a bit more. Um, we didn't have um, as many people from Australia as I thought we probably would. Um, and of course you also have the issue that the mm. survey was in English. Um, so we, we yeah. were inevitably cutting out some people. Um, uh, but, but there we are. That, that, was, that, that's the, that was our first one. Now what I would ask, what I would ask and this isn't, um, this isn't just uh, me um, advertising, um, <laughs> advertising my interest feed. If you could follow um, me um, and also Jan um, and uh, uh, Jan is um, at uh, Y G O U R V E N. Um, I, I would like to follow this up with with some other with some other research. And the the kinds of people that are watching this right now are exactly the kind of people that will be able to help spread the word. Um, and whatever we do, we will share with you as well. Um, so that we can better understand the sorts of people that are um, using the networks, how they're using them, uh, and so on. So if if you could follow me, if you want to ping me a uh, a tweet, that would be fantastic. Um, at James MB, I hope the thing works, um, uh, uh, and that would be great because you know at the end of the day, uh, we know anecdotally. Um, what we know, but when we actually have the numbers, we can do much more interesting things, and all of us can can learn more about how these communities operate. Thank, thank you, James. Uh, we we kindly requested to uh, uh, adjourn this meeting at uh, nine fifty-five. So we we've got two minutes to go. So that leaves us one minute uh, for Scott and one minute for Andrew to conclude. Um, I would just just for myself. I think we, there is uh, this this study has been very very interesting and has shown new ways and uh, great perspective for the future in terms of research. And I think we we have uh, maybe when you next come to Paris, James, we we have to sit and and think about how we can conduct this uh, this survey and 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 take it a step forward. I think there's probably also a case here to uh, broaden the scope and uh, take it beyond Facebook and, and include uh, Twitter, as I said, and, and other social media platforms. 
So over to you guys, Andrew and Scott, you've got now a little bit less than one minute to conclude. Uh, uh, okay, thank you very much, Jan. Thank you, James. Um, uh, great to be on the on the call this morning. Um, uh, the, the one quick thing that um, uh, I would um, add uh, is that uh, I would be really, really interested to uh, to see um, further research on younger generations. I know, James, you just talked about the age. Uh, the age thing and digital natives, uh, millennials in particular, uh, I think some further research on their usage of social media and other social networks and tools, bearing in mind that many of them don't use Facebook um, in anywhere near the same levels as the uh, the middle age or older um, age bracket. So um, uh, that's a request really perhaps to you, James and Jan. Um, next time we reconvene, can we see some, uh, some data on younger generations? I think that would be really fascinating for the future of social network and media usage. And thanks, perfect. guys. We'll have to ask James to stop asking all his old gits to answer his questions. <laughs> You're the only one that speaks to me, Jan. I've got no choice. <laughs> uh, I'll just pitch in and say thank you very much and goodbye. All right, excellent. Thank you all. So we're, we're on time. And over to you, my community manager. Thank yeah, you. thanks, guys. Um, and uh, all right, so everybody tuning in, we'll see you at the next panel. So thanks a lot.